okay, this is shaping up to be a crazy week because already Google has given us a new state-of-the-art reasoning model. Revy's given us a new state-of-the-art image generation model. OpenAI's finally released native image generation. And we've got a bunch of MCP breakthroughs, allowing Claude to talk to Blender, Unity, and Unreal Engine so you can literally speak 3D worlds into existence. Let's get into it. All right, so first and foremost, Google has dropped Gemini 2.5 Pro, which they're dubbing their most intelligent AI model yet. And they're not capping. It is literally on the top of LM Arena. And the difference is sizable. We're talking about a 40-point score ahead of Grok 3, GPT 4.5 preview, and even DeepSeek R1. There are certain dimensions where Claude still ends up taking the cake. But by and far, this is the new king in town. Now, we've got a bunch of reasoning models to choose from. Claude 3.7 thinking. We've got DeepSeek R1. We've even got Grok 3. But what's cool about this is their massive context window and the ability to process multimodal data. So I'd say this is vibe coding approved to the point where you can create a bunch of really cool things like we've covered in previous videos using 3JS, P5JS, whatever else that you'd want to throw at this thing. Now, if you haven't gone seen my video on vibe coding for creators, definitely go check that out because it'll give you an idea of the types of things that you can do with this new reasoning model at your disposal. And let me tell you, it's not just making 3D stuff. Since this is a natively multimodal model and it's got this huge context window, you can drop all sorts of videos in it. So if you'll recall, we went into AI Studio and basically used this reasoning capabilities to detect every time I made a shot and create this augmented reality HUD overlay that I'm overlaying on the top left, writing the full After Effects expression for it too, to give me this final result. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with it. So definitely go check that out if you haven't already. Now you can also do some very mundane things with it. For example, throwing in a 13 minute video, which like boom, 240 tokens right over there. And I say something as simple as you are a world-class YouTube packaging expert. Watch this video, listen to the audio and dialogue. Tell me three strong titles following the principles of Daryl Eves, and then basically give me chapters. And here you can see its internal chain of thought. And it's getting everything down from like the animated transition, me jumping in to an empty chair, like I'm teleporting in, about my credibility, the core ideas that I've presented, on and on it goes. Then you can see a reasoning about the different types the titles, what principles to use. And then finally, if I just go through all of that, after 30 seconds, I get this answer. Why Netflix and YouTube skipped Apple Vision Pro, X Google AR VR lead. Damn, you know, it's funny. A lot of the LLMs keep telling me to lean into sort of the X Google background, which I would love to do. I bring it up when it makes sense. I find it a little cringe when you've got other folks that are like the ex Google ex meta tech leads and all this other stuff. Though I really like the tech lead. Anyway, here's the YouTube chapters I got out. And honestly, it's pretty freaking fantastic. I'm probably going to package this video using exactly this technique just to make it extra meta. Now, speaking of Google, one of the other things we covered recently is their new Gemini image generation model, this natively multimodal model that can accept images, audio, video, text, and then can output text and images natively, not calling some other model that does it for you, but natively doing it. Now, of course, as a part of that, we were joking about how nobody gets OpenAI to ship unreleased stuff like Google does, because this exact capability was actually touted by OpenAI last year. They just never shipped it. Turns out they are now. So as of today, Tuesday, March 25th, you can indeed do native image generation. And it's really quite good. So in this example, I said, make an image of a UFO parking not allowed sign with a UFO conspicuously parked in that spot with a gray alien arguing with a police officer in front of it. And you can see the results are pretty freaking amazing. What's especially cool is I added on one extra prompt just saying, make it photorealistic and put a bunch of Teslas in the background because you know, that's topical. And check out the results. You can see they're substantially, substantially similar. Of course, the text rendition is absolutely amazing. And to that end, let me show you one other example. So here I said, tell me Einstein's most famous quotes that we'd be primed for sharing on X. Cool, I got a bunch of quotes. I wanna go with the most obvious one, the one that's most popular. Imagination is more important than knowledge. I basically said, create a new carousel image design for the first quote and got this. This is fantastic. The fact that Einstein's in there, the fact that the text looks absolutely perfect. There are no typos whatsoever. And it just looks like a poster. Now you can iterate with this, of course, and say, now make it more of like a holographic, like wireframe design. I wanted to show like uh, the fabric of space time, like stretching 
under the influence of gravity of an object. And I got something like this, pretty freaking cool. So all the tips that we covered about, you know, leaning into the world knowledge of large language models, image editing and colorization, chaining different prompts together, long text generation, all that good stuff absolutely implies here, including the advanced prompting techniques that we went over. So go check that video out for a good reference on all the stuff you can try with this new image generation update inside of ChatGPT. So speaking of image generation, we also got a new state-of-the-art image generation model this week. And so this is a startup that's decloaked after about a year and a half, and they are ahead of Recraft, Flux 1.1 Pro, Imagen 3, and mid journey as well. And it's fairly uncensored. You can do celebrities, you can do brands, anything to your heart's content. So use wisely. Uh, but I love that in these like Elon and Zuck generations, they actually got the height delta right between uh, Elon and Zuck. And oftentimes, especially in something like mid journey 6.1, when you say Elon Musk shaking hands with Mark Zuckerberg, you'll often notice that their likeness ends up being sort of like this blend between the two of them. So it's neither. It's like a blend of both of those folks talking to each other. It looks really weird. But the results here are absolutely fantastic. Now, I was asking some of the creators of this model, like, what are some things that it particularly excels at? And one of the things that Oscar from the Revy team pointed out is that, you know what? It's actually very good at typography. So these are all single text prompts to get this type of output. Single text prompt again, like this looks like a final image and I'm mind blown with just how good the fidelity is. Here's an immaculate Billie Eilish poster. That's like hit print, hit publish. That's like good to go. And this obviously makes sense because the person who worked on this, Muhammad, it looks like he's from the VO and Imogen team at Google DeepMind. So they've got a team that absolutely has the chops. And I did ask them, like, is this a new model? Is this like, you know, uh, uh, fine tuned some open source model? This is a new model from the ground up on Revy specifically. The UI is super clear as well. You can do all sorts of different aesthetics. Here's me trying to do like a bunch of different thumbnail designs. <laughs> And by the way, I love that one. It actually looks quite like me, though you may not recognize me right now without the beard. Been pretty impressed with how you can bring in long strings of text. So suddenly we've got a bunch of different options. We've got Google's Demini. We've got ChatGPT 4.0's native image generation. We've got Revy. And of course, Ideogram is pretty good with text as well. So plenty of options for y'all to play with and uh, and have fun with. What's also cool is you've got this like editing ability. It's like add multiple Apache helicopters encircling the Godzilla and shooting at it. Let's just see what happens. Boom, and that's what we got, and it looks really, really good. Yeah, the propellers actually look good for the Apache. They're all oriented in the right direction and totally shooting at it. Very cool. Dare I say this looks better than some of the Google results. Let me show you a more fine grain edit. Let's say change the text from 3D is changing to 3D has changed, like a tactical change. Boom, and as you can see, we got exactly what we wanted. So very cool for image generation and also conversational editing of existing images that you have. And I'll just add that the fidelity is absolutely amazing. This is still a research preview. So I'm excited to see what the team has in store next. I'm gonna be getting a sneak peek very soon. I'm excited to share more of that with you in the near future. But for now, just head on over to preview.revy.art and have fun. It's free for the moment. All right, so you've probably seen MCP blowing up absolutely everywhere. I had a bunch of my posts on this go viral on X and even Instagram, which I like barely expected. So at a very high level, think of MCP as this open protocol, basically an API with extra steps for clients. Like let's say Claude, the desktop application, cursor, or coding editor on your desktop to interact with external tools, fetch external data and connect with various services in a somewhat standardized fashion. What's cool about this is you can turn Claude or Cursor sort of into like an everything app because you can keep spinning up these MCP servers for new applications that you want to be able to control. That's wild because we've already got MCP servers for Blender, Unity, Unreal Engine, and I suspect a whole other applications in the very near future. So what's cool about this is like suddenly you can use natural language prompts to control these existing 
software tools that are very, very complicated to use otherwise, right? So in this case, you can provide like a 2D reference image and ask, ask Claude to create it for you in 3D. And the result is pretty cool. And similar thing here on the Unity front, right? Rather than vibe coding in like 3JS and using web technologies, you can now use like a native game engine like Unity or even Unreal Engine to vibe code your games, ending up with C-sharp code that you can then edit, refine, throw in external assets and deploy to a bunch of different platforms. But this past week, things got even easier. Triple released a fork of the Blender MCP server where basically you can provide a 2D reference image and then the large language language model like Claude in this case can look at it and reason about, oh, these are the constituent elements in the scene. So then after deconstructing the scene and figuring out what assets are needed, it'll go kick off text to 3D generation prompts using Tripo, import those 3D models and arrange them in the scene to match your reference image. Now, that is exceedingly cool to see happen and very, very powerful, right? A bunch of the back and forth prompting that you might have done yourself, it's collapsing that down into just one prompt because it's doing those subsequent steps for you. I love this because this is like a perfect way to sort of get the fine grain control that you expect for 3D, but solve sort of the blank canvas problem of like, I just want a starting point to get going and this will do that for you. And then you could go wild with all the other lighting effects, rendering animation capabilities that you have inside of something like Blender. So definitely check that out by Tripo. So Sunsami had a fun little prompt here to have tea time with an orc and the results are pretty freaking fantastic. To end up with a 3D model like this that you can light easily, like this is the perfect entry point suddenly for people who want to learn Blender. I mean, even people like myself that grew up on Maya that have so much muscle memory to use a tool a certain way. This is an amazing way for me to get stuff done and then get the right sort of dials to take it all the way. Now, Siddharth, who made the original MCP Blender server, also has a similar integration using Rodden AI. So same case here, you say like, hey, I want to create a cozy scene with a cat. You describe the assets that you want, and it's just going to show up in Blender for you. And you can keep prompting it from there to maybe you want to animate that manually or maybe toss a bunch of frames into image to video. Suddenly you can start constructing this workload for a lot more consistent characters too, right? Because you defined your scene in this 3D world so you can image it from exactly the angles that you want and then add a little bit of motion using image to video models. Very, very cool and very, very fun. But see, it's not just 3D tools, right? And graphics tools. There's integrations for Figma. I come from a geospatial intelligence and mapping background. You could even use QGIS. And it's so funny that basically the Blender MCP approach to make that server was so generic that people are just forking it and making all sorts of other integrations. And it's the same thing with Figma, right? Like, do you ask the system to design like a modern looking log login screen? It'll do it for you. And since it's using proper Figma, right, it can use whatever asset libraries that you're pulling on sky is really the limit and i think we're just seeing the start of this ability the model's getting smart enough to actually meaningfully like use these different applications also what we covered earlier we've got like brand new reasoning models and like we've got deep seek r1 we've got gpt 4.5 all these new models at our disposal as they get better so will their ability to orchestrate stuff and of course the next level up from there is sort of a true agentic system and this blew my mind i haven't tried this yet but you probably saw my Manus AI video where we vibe coded a bunch of cool things. The homie M basically went into Manus and was like, yo, I want you to make a fully functional animation of like ATP synthase, adenosine triphosphate, um, and just like gave it a bunch of like natural language prompts. And it gave him a Blender file that he just downloaded and opened, and this is what was inside of it. Now, this is like hurting my head a little bit, but what this tells me is even if you take the current power of like Claw 3.5 or 3.7, the current large language models at our disposal, and you run it in this sort of agentic architecture, yeah, it may not be super efficient in terms of compute, but it can still produce some magical things for you. So here's a really cool market map that the A16 Zine infrastructure team made, and this will give you sense of like the top client. So like these are the, the the systems that are doing sort of the controlling, if you will. And these are the things that they can control. And so I'll skip over a bunch of the dev stuff, but we talked about Blender, Figma, 
Um, gosh, this is already out of date. Unity and Unreal isn't even on here. I think maybe we'll need like an AI agent that like runs this market map and like dynamically updates it on the fly. All right, so to wrap things up, as these underlying primitives get better, we get better reasoning models, we get better image generation models, we get native multimodal in and out capabilities, these foundational models will be better equipped to serve as sort of that orchestrator. And with MCP servers, we can connect any existing tool you use on your desktop or server side to these applications to orchestrate. So we're not that far from the future where you can screen record your workflow and have an AI replicated for you. Heck, you could just describe your workflow and it would do the same. This may well be the way that we lean into the creativity of these generative AI models, but still retain the control that we need as creatives. Let me know in the comments if I should do a deep dive on MCP, exactly what it is, how you set up the server, and maybe walking through a couple different scenarios, trying to make stuff in Blender, Unity, et cetera. All right, that's it for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed, and I will see y'all in the next one. Cheers. Oh, and by the way, I know it's like really weird to see me without my beard. It'll grow back.